Hey everyone, God bless you. This is Fred Krop coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. And today I want to begin a series of messages on how to be ready for the days ahead. That's right. I'm sure if you're a Bible reading Christian that you are uh, awakened to the reality that the things are happening in the, our world today that may be very well pointing to the return of Jesus. Now, I know the Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour uh, when Jesus is going to come, but the, Jesus said, and Paul said, we would know the seasons. We would understand the signs of the times. And, uh, you know, uh, it's real interesting. A lot of people go to Matthew 24, and I will be uh, quoting some things out of Matthew 24, but most people go to Ma Matthew 24 where it talks about wars and rumors of wars and uh, diseases and pe people hating one another and uh, there would be lawlessness and all that. But I want to look at a statement that the Apostle Paul made. And what I'm going to talk about to you today is how, how do you prepare yourself or how do you uh, there's some things you can do to, to be prepared for what's coming ahead. But Apostle Paul uh, writes to his spiritual sons, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now, this is in the New Living Testament and uh, or translation, and I want to read this to you. This again is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And this is what he says. He says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. Sounds like today, doesn't it? They will be boastful and proud, scoffing or making fun at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. Boy, is that true ever. They will be unloving, unforgiving, they will slander one another. They will have no self-control. They will be cruel. They will hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They'll be reckless and puffed up with pride. And they will love pleasure rather than God. And they will act religious, but they'll reject the power that could make them godly. And then Paul says, stay away from people like that. And so here Paul is giving a description of what people would be like, and he says, in the last days. So, so if, you know, one of the ways we can look at what are the signs, you know, is it wars and rumors of wars? Is it earthquakes? Is it pestilence? Is it all these kind of things? How about just looking at how people are right now? People all over the world. We see people that are cruel. We see people... Uh, even here in America, that hate that which is good, that nothing's considered sacred anymore. People that are unloving, that are full of pride and arrogance, and they just think that God is a joke about disobedience to parents uh, and slandering one another. Wow, all you have to do is go on Facebook and see people slandering people, or on YouTube, people attacking, even Christians attacking other Christians and calling them false prophets and all kinds of things like that. Well, here Paul is describing people. And it's really interesting. He said they would even act religious, but they would, in that one version says, they deny the power of God. And so here we are in a uh, age in the church where people are teaching principles and they're teaching um you know, this is how you should live and so on. But there is very little power of God being manifest in the church. Well, Paul said that would be the conditions of people in the last days. So I don't know if this is the last of the last days. Or certainly it is the last days for you and me. But uh, I think that we're looking at the very times right now. We're living in the very times that the Apostle Paul talked about would that he would call the last days. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had something major in your life happen that you were not ready for? Maybe it was the birth of a baby or you got fired or, you know, all of a sudden you got a bad diagnosis. 
but there was something that happened in your life uh, that was major and you just were not ready for it. You know, you would say things like, I should have saw this coming, or I wish I'd thought this through, or I wasn't prepared for this. Well, I've got some good news for you, and that is that the Lord wants you and I to be ready for what is coming ahead. So certainly the Bible, it's really, this is what's really amazing about us having the Word of God, the Bible, is because the Bible, and again now, written almost 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago, back into the, you know, before Christ as well, but the Bible actually gives us clarity on what history would be like and what would happen, especially in the last day, what the Bible calls the last days. Now, Jesus, in Matthew 24, he was talking to his disciples, and he was they were asking him the question, what would be the signs of his coming? And uh, in the midst of talking that, one of the things, talking about the different signs, again, earthquakes and, uh, and wars and rumors of wars and uh, people hating one another and uh, people falling away from God and so on. But then he says this in Matthew 24, verse 42 and 44. It says this. It says, he writes, he says to them, therefore, stay awake, for you do not know the day your Lord is coming. But know this, if the master of the house had known what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house been broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Now, isn't that interesting? So here, Jesus is telling his disciples, what you need to do is be ready all the time. Now, this is 2,000 years ago that he's talking to his disciples. And if you look at the first century church, they lived as if Jesus was coming back any day. Uh, here's another translation of that same passage in Matthew 24. This is the New Living uh, Translation. It says this, Jesus said, So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day the Lord is coming. Understand this, that if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time. I like that phrase. Be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Uh, the, you know, the first version said, when you don't expect it. So, in other words, when Jesus comes, people aren't going to be expecting him to come. Certainly, most of the people in the world have no thought about the idea that we are about to experience the second coming of Jesus Christ. Matthew 24 calls uh, the things that would happen birth pangs leading up to the birth of the return of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul writes, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and this is talking about the end times, and he writes to the church at Thessalonica, and he says, Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers, you have no need that anything be written to you. So in other words, he said, you're going to understand the seasons. You're going to understand when the time uh, of these things is going to happen. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying... There is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. Now, there's the, the, the one of the signs is that though that before the Lord comes, th that the earth or the world will start to go through labor pains. And you know, if you know anything about you know, I've been uh, I was there for all of my uh, daughter's births, and uh, you know, when the labor pains are coming, they get more intense toward as, you know, uh, the, the time of the birth of the baby. And so here, Paul equates the end times that there would be times of birth pangs. In other words, there's going to be, it's going to, things that are negative are going to get stronger and stronger. There's going to be stronger and stronger signs that Jesus is about to come back. And he says this, he says, uh, and they, uh, it says, and let me go back here, it says, there will People will say there's peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. And this, listen to this, and they will not escape. In other words, it's going to be too late. But you, now he, he's writing to the Christians. He says, but you 
are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not children of night or darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. Now, you know, it's real interesting. I was in a lot of prayer meetings during 2020. And you know, one of the most common prayers that I heard that happened, people prayed over and over and again, again, maybe hundreds and hundreds of times. And the prayer was, wake us up, wake us up. And so I believe that what's happening right now is God is waking us up to the times and the seasons we're in. He's waking us up and he wants us to know what to do. We want to be like the sons of Issachar, the Bible says, who understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. And so the good news again is that God wants you to know what's coming ahead and he wants you to be prepared or ready for the days that are coming. And so that's why uh, there's so many things that the Bible teaches us about how we can be prepared. But I want to just talk to you uh, for the next few minutes. Those of you that are joining me, I'm talking, and this is the beginning, first message of a series called uh, How to Be Ready for the Days Ahead. Again, click share if you're watching me and, uh, and uh, post any questions or any comments that you have in the chat. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to uh, email you the notes if you'd like those as well. I'll give you my email later. All right. So how do we prepare? Well, think about that. I think there are some practical ways that we can be prepared. I think, number one, the first thing that comes to me is, number one, know what is coming. So the more you know, and, you know, the way you get, when, when you get just whacked or just overwhelmed by a, a circumstance that happens in your life is you didn't see it coming. You didn't know it was coming. But you know what's really amazing is the Bible uh, is, is, the, is, gives us the history of the world from start to end, from the beginning to the end. God lays out, here's what's going to happen. And then he details, uh, a lot of details. I think there's 150 chapters just in, in the Bible, just on the end times talking about those days. So obviously God wants us to know what is coming. And that's number one, know what's coming. In Proverbs 27, verse 12, it says this, the prudent person, the prudent, that means a wise person, the prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. But the simpleton or the naive goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Let me read that one to you again. The prudent person foresees the danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes on blindly and suffers consequences. Now, when I'm talking here, some of you are thinking, yeah, well, we need to store up food and we need to get ammunition and we need to get, you know, arm ourselves and we need to do all these things. We need to go, go move to a state where we're going to be safe, safe and all that. And I think, you know, unless God tells you to do those things, um, specifically, I wouldn't do that. I'm not talking about how to be prepared just in the physical sense. I want to talk to you about, about how to be uh, prepared for the days ahead spiritually, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. So the prudent person sees the danger. He sees what's coming. And some of the dangers have to do with buying into lies and deceptions. One of the big words uh, about the end times is that many will be deceived. And so uh, if you understand that, that there's going to be deception there, then you can arm yourself with the word of God and you can help yourself to help yourself to avoid being deceived by knowing what the Bible says. So number one is know what is coming. Number two is gather information that will help you prepare. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says this, wisdom is is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. So I believe that we can gather information uh, from the Word of God, from those that are uh, more, you know, have really studied these areas of talking about the end times and how, what do we do, and how do we prepare our hearts and prepare our lives and so on, that we can uh, get uh, information that will prepare us 
and especially, again, by reading the Word of God. Uh, it's real interesting. Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, and he talks about uh, how you can be fruitful uh, through your life. And here's what he says. He says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add, notice this now, add to your faith virtue. That means godly living. Uh, to virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things, Peter says, are yours and abound, you will me neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so here, Peter's giving like a list. He wants you to add this to this, add this to this, add this to this, so that you will be neither barren nor unfruitful. I think, it, you know, a lot of people are hoping for the rapture to come before there's any problems in the world. I'm sure the Christians in Afghanistan would have been hoping for the rapture to come, and Christians that have been martyred in China and other nations around the world would have been hoping for the rapture to come. But you know what? The rapture hasn't come. And so, in fact, Jesus, uh, when he prayed in John 17, and he said, Father, I do not want you to take them out of the world but I want you to keep them in the world so that they will accomplish the same mission that you sent me for. And so instead of having an escapism mentality, let's, let's get ourselves ready. Let's understand that there is not just a negative agenda that's going to happen, but there's going to be a glory that's going to come. There's going to be a preaching. Uh, in fact, one of the signs of the end times in Matthew 24 is that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the nations, and then the end will come. Well, who's going to preach the gospel in all the nations? Is it going to be angels? Is it going to be, you know, the, the last people that are alive on the earth that get saved? No, it's going to be you and me. That's right. And so our, we're going to get ready because we're going to gather information into our lives from the Word of God uh, and, and we're going to grow in our knowledge of God so that we are fruitful in these days and these, in this time. It's real interesting. Proverbs 24, 5 says this. It says, a wise man is strong and a man of knowledge increases power. I think one of the number one things that ought to be on your prayer list is God give me wisdom. Fill me with wisdom. Fill me with knowledge. Fill me with understanding. Help me to have discernment and to understand the times. So that was number two. Number three, uh, third thing you can do to, to prepare yourself or to be ready is to listen to those who have experience and learn from their successes and mistakes. Now, so there are, by the way, Christians already that are being persecuted around the world. Here in America, we've lived in a bubble for many, many years and we have had really, if we have any persecution at all, it's been very mild. Uh, I've traveled in 41 nations of the world, and I've, I've, been, I've ministered in some nations where Christians were highly, highly persecuted, put to death, put in jail, put in prison, all those things, tortured. And when I hear uh, them, when I hear their testimonies, and by the way, the testimonies of those that survived, these were people that were filled with joy and filled with the love of God, even for their persecutors. And so there's something we can learn from those who have experience in uh, you know, going through tests and trials and difficulties and so on. And so um, Paul, uh, he writes to Timothy, again, his spiritual son, in chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. And here's what Paul says to Timothy. He says, you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, listen to this now, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. And that with persecutions, I, with those persecutions or what persecutions I endured and out of them all the Lord delivered me. And yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So he's writing to Timothy. He's saying, you know what? If you live godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. But I want you to know, I, I want you to learn from me, from my experiences where I was beaten and I was stoned and I was, you know, put in jail over and over again. And I was accused and I was out 
in the sea, you know, for three days and three nights, stranded out there, you know, floating around in the sea. And my life was in jeopardy here and there. But I want you to know that you can make it. You can get through this because out of the, he says, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Wow. And so number three is listen to those who have experience and learn from their successes and their mistakes. Here's number four, the fourth thing you can do to be ready for what lies ahead, and that is to discipline yourself now so that you will have strength for what lies ahead. Let me say that one again. Discipline yourself now so that you will have strength for what lies ahead. Those of you that are joining me on Facebook, I'm talking about, I'm starting the first message of a series of messages on how to be ready for what's, you know, for what lies ahead or what's in the future. And so I'm going through things right now where you can understand, here's some things you can do to prepare yourself for the days ahead. So here's number four. Number four is discipline yourself so you will have strength for what lies ahead. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians, when he wrote to Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, he said these words. He said, but I disciplined my body and made it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Another version says, I buffet my body. Some people read it to mean, I buffet my body. That's why we go to the, the, you know, all you can eat buffet. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. And so he said, I disciplined or I buffet my body, which means I beat my body. Now, I don't think we should go around beating ourselves. But what I'm, he says, I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, Uh, I myself will not be disqualified. So listen, if you don't like, you know, difficulties right now, you don't like, um, I'm on avoid pain at all costs, and uh, I never want to uh, say no to myself, you need to get a different attitude and, and understand that you need to prepare yourself for the future. And Paul says, I do that by disciplining my body. That could be fasting and prayer. That could be exercise. That could be making sure you're spending time in prayer and so on. But he says, I discipline my body. Now, here's another interesting verse in Jeremiah 12, verse 5. Jeremiah writes and says this, if you have run with the footmen and they have tired you out, how can you compete with horses? Or if you fall down in a land of peace, how will you do in the thicket of Jordan? So he's talking about, okay, I mean, if you can't keep up with, you know, you get, maybe you get somebody doesn't like you or somebody um, um, falsely accuses you or offends you or something, you can't even, and, and you're not in any big persecution. They're not killing your family. They're not putting you in jail and you just can't handle it. That's just too much. He says, then how are you going to handle it when you get into more serious, difficult situations? Okay. And so he talks about, you know, if you fall down in the time of peace, and, you know, here we are relatively in a time of peace here in America, we have for many, many years. But if things begin to get more difficult, and I would anticipate that they are going to get more difficult, yes, they're going to be glorious. Yes, we're going to see the power of God and the glory of God. We're going to see multitudes come to the kingdom of God, but we're also going to see a rise of darkness, and we're going to see a rise of persecution. And so here, uh, Jeremiah is saying, well, listen, if you can't handle it in the time of peace, how are you going to handle it when things get really are difficult? in the thicket of Jordan, the Jordan, he says. So that was number four. Let me go back real quick. Number one was, how do we prepare? I'm talking to you about how to prepare for the days ahead. Number one was know what's coming. Number two, gather information that will help you prepare. And number three was listen to those who have experience and learn from their successes and mistakes. And number four was discipline yourself so that you have strength for what lies ahead. Here's number five. Learn from your trials, and they'll produce endurance in you. James writes, you know, nobody likes trials, but do you know that there's a purpose in the trial? That God wants to use trials to actually strengthen you and give you endurance. Listen to James chapter 1, verses 2 through through 4. James writes and says, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. Now, you know, how many of you like, the trial comes on, hallelujah, praise God, this is great, I'm so excited. That sounds like an abnormal or a weird 
you know, reaction to going through a trial. Most of the time we're like, why is this happening to me? Oh, woe is me. I don't like this. I got to get out of this situation. But here James says, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. Well, why would you consider it joy when you encounter various trials? It's because there's a purpose in the trial. God is going to actually strengthen you by testing your faith. He goes on to say this, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Do you see that? Why would James write and say, we need to count it all joy when we encounter trials? Because he saw the greater purpose within the trial. He he saw when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. He saw that when the enemy comes in, what happens is God begins to strengthen your faith as you pass the test and go through the trial and rejoice in the midst of the trial. And, you know, I remember a, a, a man of God years ago said, if you're going through a trial, get the most you can out of it. So Paul says here, he says, rejoice in the trial, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Endurance means that you're going to be able to keep going. You're going to be able to run farther. You're going to be able to to do more. You're going to be able to withstand even more conflict or issues that would might come against you. You're going to be able to break through those evil spirits that want to attack you because you have learned through the trial. And he says this, so that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. So through the trial, God's equipping you to have the strength that you need to run the long run race. That's why Paul said, I have run the race, I have finished the course, and I'm now winning the prize. So that was number five, learn from your trials and and, uh, they will produce endurance in you. Here's number six, be faithful in little things and that will prepare you for the bigger things ahead. And so here it is. If you're, you know, if you're unfaithful in a little thing, you'll be unfaithful in much. And but here in Luke 16, verse 10, Jesus said this in a parable of the unrighteous uh, servant. He said, "He who is faithful in a very little thing, this is Jesus talking, is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is also unrighteous in much." So there's, listen, a lot of times we don't think, we're all waiting for the big thing that we want to do or the big thing to happen. But here Jesus says the key to getting ready for the big thing is to be faithful in the little thing. Are you faithful in the little things that God has given you to do? It's being obedient in the small things, in that whatever God asks you, if it's tithing, if it's giving, it's reading the Bible on a consistent basis, you're faithful in little things. It's in blessing other people, doing certain things. Be faithful in the little stuff, and God will make you ready for that which is lies ahead, the bigger things that are coming. So that was number six. Be faithful in the little things, and that will prepare you for the big things that are ahead. And here's the last one, and that is lean into the Holy Spirit to help you prepare. Now, Jesus, uh, at the end of John uh, John and the Gospel of John, over and over, tells his disciples, I'm going to send you the helper, and he's going to help you. And so the Holy Spirit isn't just some a person that just gives us revelation or he's out there, but he is our helper. He is our strength. He is our ability. He is our sufficiency. And so in John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, And he said this, he says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will will disclose to you what is to come. Now that's a mouthful of stuff there, right? And a lot of stuff. He said, the spirit of truth will guide you in all truth. Well, if one of the number one things in the end times is going to be deception, whose help do we need? That's right. We need the Holy Spirit's help. And Jesus said, I know you're going to need that. You're going to need the Holy Spirit to help you to understand clearly what is truth and also to discern what is a lie and what is false. And so then he says this, and he, the Holy Spirit, 
will disclose to you what is to come. So if as you build a relationship, so that's what I mean, lean into the Holy Spirit. That means I depend on you, Holy Spirit. I need you, Holy Spirit, every day. I need you to help me. And as you lean into the Holy Spirit, he's going to open your eyes and he's going to give you a heads up on what's coming ahead. In John 14, 26, Jesus called the, the Holy Spirit, the helper. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Again, now, if the, there's going to be a war against evil and good, but it's going to be a, a war between truth and lies. And so Jesus said that he would send the Holy Spirit and he would help us. So here, I want to just go over one more time the seven things you can do to be ready for the days ahead. Those of you that are joining right now on Facebook, I'm talking about uh, starting the first in a series of messages on how to be ready for what's uh, for the days ahead. Let me say it again, how to be ready for the days ahead. So listen, things are coming down. Things are going to happen, and not for us to be full of fear and all that, but for uh, Jesus showed us ahead of time, the Bible shows us ahead of time how we can be ready for what's coming. So here's the seven things. I want to just go over them in closing here uh, that for you to be ready for the days ahead. Number one, know what's coming. Number two, gather information um, that will help you prepare. Number three, listen to those who have experience and learn from their successes and their mistakes. Number four, discipline yourself so that you will have strength for what lies ahead. Number five, learn from your trials and they will produce endurance in you. Number six, be faithful in little things and that will prepare you for the bigger things ahead. And number seven, lean into the Holy Spirit to help you to prepare. Well, let me play, pray for you as I close this time. I hope this was helpful. Uh, in the next session, I'm going to tell you the number one thing you need to do to be ready for the days ahead. You won't want to miss the next session. And uh, I don't know how many sessions this is going to go, but I just want to, to equip you and prepare you for the days ahead so you don't, you're not caught off guard uh, and realize I was not ready for this. I, I don't know how to handle this because the Bible says, that one of the things will happen in the end times is that many will fall away. Why? Because they weren't ready for what was going to come. But let me pray for you right now as I close this session. Father, I thank you that you're so good and that you're a God who, who goes before us and also is our rear guard. And you want to help us. You want to prepare us for the days ahead so that we are strong in the Lord and the strength of your might. So I'm asking you, God, to begin to speak to us. I ask you to open our ears to hear and our eyes to see and our hearts to understand. Help us to understand the times and know what we should do. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters that you will begin to fulfill the preparation process so that when the days ahead have come, whether they're difficult or easy, whether there's greater, greater tribulations and trials, whatever we would face ahead, we're ready and we're more than up to the task because we're walking by faith and not by sight. We're going to walk by your word. And so, Lord, I bless my brothers and sisters right now. I ask you right now to touch their lives supernaturally, God, and I pray you'll give them the grace to prepare for what lies ahead. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, can you say amen to that? Well, listen, my brothers and sisters, don't, again, remember, this is a series, and next session, I'm going to talk to you about the number one thing you need to do to prepare for the days ahead. So in the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, I love you, and Jesus loves you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.